What's up everybody, this is Cakes and welcome back to our first tutorial in which we set up our C++ project. The first thing we need is Git and we are going to use it to create a project and then save the changes. You can download it from this website right here, I'll put the link in the description if you want to. Alternatively, you could also Google Git, should be the first result. During the installation, I just leave everything on default. If you want, you can change anything, but you should know what you're doing. Once we are done with that, I want you to open up an explorer and then click in the top bar to search. And inside the top bar, please type in CMD and then hit enter. This will bring up a terminal window in which we type in Git. And that should give you a long message like this. It's basically telling you that Git is installed and it knows the command. The next step is to open up GitHub or whatever Git service you use and then on the side create a repository of your liking. I will call the project Celeste Clone and of course it will be public and then for the Git Ignore I'm going to create that later. You can if you want to add a default Git Ignore for your needs. And then of course we create the repository. The next step is a little bit more complicated but I'm going to include it in case you have never done it before. You need to set up an SSH key for GitHub if you want to clone repositories and push to them. In order to generate an SSH key, you need to type in either the SSH key gen using a certain algorithm. And then if you want to, you can connect it to your email address that you use to connect to the website. In the past, I've used the RSA key generation because I already have a key. If you want to, you can use either of these. It looks like that one is an old one, the RSA, and that one is the new one, the ED25519. So you're just going to copy and then paste this into a terminal window and then press enter and follow the instructions. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to create another key. And then once you are done with that, you need to copy the contents of the public key. You can find it by going to your PC, the local C drive, users, then your username, and then under the .ssh folder. This is where you find your public key. You can open it, and then copy the entire content of it. And then once you're done with that on GitHub, go to your settings, SSH and GPG keys. And then over here, you can add a new SSH key or a new GPG key. Once you're done with that, you need to go back to your repository, click the green button for the code, and then select the SSH option and copy it. After that, go back to the terminal window and type in git clone and then paste the message from the clipboard and hit enter. This will copy everything from the repository to your local machine into the folder called whatever you named the repository after. For me, it will be Celeste clone. And then when we open it, we should only have a .git folder, which is usually hidden and a readme file. Next, please create a new file and call it build.sh. This file is going to act as our build script. That means we are not going to be using any of the known build systems like premake, make files or cmake. The reason why we are using an sh file here is because it is natively supported on Linux and on Mac. On Windows, since we installed Git, we actually have an sh executable that you can locate on your C drive under Git. On my machine, it is under C, program files, Git and then bin. And there we have the sh executable. This allows us to invoke shell scripts, which effectively means we can now invoke the script on Mac, Linux and Windows. And so I wanted to give that a try to see how it works because we need to use Git anyways. I know that this is a little bit weird, but in my opinion, it is better because we can use the clan commands directly and we have a list of things that actually happens on each operating system separately. And we will get to that at a later stage. But I just wanted to explain why we are using this instead of not CMake. I fucking I hate CMake, okay? So yeah, once you have located the sh file, please make sure that you add it to your environment variables by typing in environment variables in your search bar and then please add in a new entry containing the path to the sh file. Now you should be able to invoke the build.sh file. Next, we need to download a C++ compiler and we are going to be using LLVM because in this tutorial we will focus on Linux and Windows. And then another person is currently actively developing on Mac, uh, but I'm not going to cover that until it's done. In the list of download options, and I will again put the link in the description, please select the version LLVM 16 Windows 64 executable. Once that is done downloading, please make sure that you select for all users and then hit next twice and then it should start installing. If we go ahead and open up a terminal now, we need to make sure that the old terminal is closed and we open up a new one. Please make sure that you do that because LLVM adds to the path 
And if you have an old console window open, then it won't know about that until you close and open it again. That's a Windows thing. Don't ask me why that is, but you have to do it. Otherwise, you will not find the clang command. And then, of course, we type in clang, which should give us an error message. No input files. Great. So now that we have the compiler, so apparently there's an additional step that you have to do after installing LLVM, which I was not aware of because I already had that installed on my system. Apparently you need to install Visual Studio. And the reason for that is the setup is not correct because Clang is not self-sufficient. It needs another compiler, for example, MSVC. But MinGW is also an option because Clang doesn't come with a standard library. And we are actually going to be using that standard library. So what we need to do is we need to install Visual Studio. So on this website right here, this is the Microsoft Visual Studio website. You scroll down and I'll put the link in the description as well. You go over here to the download button and then you download the community version. And then it will give you a Visual Studio setup executable. And then it will install you the Visual Studio installer. And then after installing, it should give you this window. Now, obviously, there shouldn't be an update. Maybe if there is one for you, you should do it. And then you should not have a Visual Studio community edition here. You shouldn't have anything if you're running into the problem where you cannot use Clang on Windows. And now I know that this is in German and I'm unfortunately not able to turn this into English. But there should be a button somewhere here stating that you can install or add components, which is what you want to do. And then it will give you a list of components. And if you want to make it yourself very easy, you just tick the box right here at the very bottom, which says game development in C++. And then once you're done installing, you should now be able to run Clang. We have Git. Next, we need an IDE to program in. And uh, among all the options, I think Visual Studio Code is the best. Not only, in my opinion, is it the most performant, but we also have the capability to cater it or change it to our needs. Downloading Visual Studio Code should be quite simple. I again put the link in the description, but just type in Visual Studio Code into Google and you should find it. The installation instructions should also be simple. The default ones always work if you want to add any special ones that you need. And then once that is done, please open it up. First, we are going to install some extensions. I use the C++ extension. And then for me, I always download Vim. And then lastly, I also add in the shader language support. I know that Vim collides with the shader language support for Visual Studio Code. So whenever you open up a shader for the first time, it lags. But I, you get used to that and it's fine. I just wanted to point that out that if you experience any lags opening up a shader file for the first time, this is the reason. Okay, and now that we are done, please create a new folder called .vs code and then inside that folder create a new file called tasks.json. I'm going to quickly show what I'm typing in here because that is not so important. We are basically creating a task that invokes our sh build.sh file. And this will work on Linux as well as on Windows. Again, no comment on Mac. I've not uh, tried it myself, but I have heard that it works like this as well. After that, we can finally start and program so create a source folder and then inside the folder create a main.c++ file we start by typing in a simple int main function together with a while loop that conditions on running and then we are going to put a generic comment updating the game for example and of course after the while loop we return zero on top we add in a static bool running and set it to true and that is basically the simplest version of an update loop in a game engine and then finally switch to the build.sh file and inside of that the only thing we need to type in is the exclamation mark bin bash followed by a clang source main cpp and we want to output it to schnitzel.executable i chose schnitzel because on stream we actually created a schnitzel engine and so it is kind of a weird name you should maybe call it celeste or something else this was not my decision okay and then lastly we need to tell visual studio code how to run our program and for that we create a new file under the visual studio code folder calling it launch.json again i'm not going to go into too much detail here but basically we are setting up a C++ Visual Studio debug type and then we are invoking our schnitzel.executable. Now we can hit F5 which will run our program and obviously nothing happens because we are not updating or we're not doing any calculations in the while loop. And this is going to be our build system from now on. We're going to add to the build.sh file over time. It will not be that big, but we will be able to support Windows, Linux and Mac. And if you want, you can now type in any code and try to compile it and then run the program. Uh, you know, for example, you can print F something to the console. Now that we are done with this, you should have something that looks like this. And if you see these green indications here that show that this is something 
something new to get and uh, if we were to push right now we would also push the executable and other files that we create in the future that we might not want to have in the repository on git because we want to create them using the build script for example if we add in the dash minus g or the minus g here and then we build again we get an ilk and pdb file and so i have a git ignore here that looks something like this and we are just going to copy and paste the contents of it into the repository so we are going to ignore any executables any ilk files zip files exp files obg files dll files the vs code folder if you don't want that put it in here i'm just gonna keep it and this is from Visual Studio Code. I don't like this file. It's sometimes it gets auto-generated from the Visual Studio Code C++ extension. All of these we copy and then we create a new file. Dot git. Git ignore. And then we paste that in here. Now we only have our build file, the VS Code folder and the source folder. Now we can actually push to git i quickly wanted to add that because in the original video i didn't have that let's go about the pros and cons about why we are using that and obviously everyone can use cmake if they want to i'm not against that at all i just don't like using cmake myself and since it's questioning whether incremental builds will be supported and this is something that i want to touch on here as well now what we have here is the final version of the schnitzel motor engine this is what i've shown you in the tutorial intro if we switch over to the build.sh file now the first reason of why we are using or why we are doing it this way is because uh, i like to show and to learn myself what it means to compile on different platforms i know that everyone can use cmake and it is very simple in cmake because it is already cross-platform but when for example when i started learning c i didn't know at all what was actually happening when you're building an executable in c and what goes into actually building a c executable so for example if we focus on windows right now which is the stuff that is in this section of the build.sh file and you can see that it is about 47 lines of code uh, what you have to invoke is a clang c and then the compiler handle for debug symbols then you supply a c file uh, in this case we want to create a shared library and we want to output that one to a dll file including warnings and defines and then at the same time we have a bunch of libraries that we link with on Windows and we have a bunch of includes that we do on Windows further down below when we build our main file. And for me, this holds value because now you actually know how you build a program using Clang. You will not be able to decipher that using CMake. On top of that, the documentation for CMake is atrociously bad. Now, what I have right here is a very old version of an engine of mine, which I created at the very beginning of my journey and obviously it uses cmake and you can see right here that it uses vc package even which is a microsoft package manager just like when you use node for example or npm and you can see that i use quite a few libraries packages right here sdl2 for example vulcan free type and many different packages and if you look take a look at the cmake file which in my opinion is quite convoluted because you don't really know what is happening you i have to set some sort of tool chain file uh, which is i mean the current source directory is supposedly fine and then uh, it adds in some sort of vc package cmake file which i don't know what it happened what happens there then uh, we set our output directory to binary that is fine i guess we set the standard that's fine and then we set a project to kxgen this is where it gets a little blurry and then we add a subdirectory which i'm not really sure anymore whether that is actually an include directory or not basically when you include files that it looks in this directory or not it's been a while and this is just the beginning of cmake but as we get into source we find another cmake file which at this point in my opinion it gets out of hand because you can see how many lines of codes uh, i have here it is 37 and look at um, how many subdirectories i have to add in here and then on top of that i have to declare a bunch of header and c++ files uh, and at this point i think we are so far disconnected from what is actually happening that i don't see any value in teaching that or showing that if you want to use cmake again just use it it's fine i'm not I have nothing against it for me this has no educational value learning how someone else thinks a build system should look like um, 
And so that's why I'm not using it and I'm exploring this option. There's another reason why I'm using this build system. Uh, as you can see, I'm only using or I'm only compiling one C++ file or one compilation unit. And what that is called is a Unity build system. And this is the advantage of using a Unity build is you don't have to compile a lot of C++ files and you have mostly consistent build times, which I like a lot. Now, obviously, you can do a Unity build in CMake as well. But for me, the educational purpose is to show you what it means to compile on different platforms. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one when we create a Windows window. Until then, have a good day. Peace.